And when his disciples, James and John, had seen this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And turning, he rebuked them, saying, You know not of what spirit you are. The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today we're going to look at the life of the Apostle St. James, the son of Zebedee, and who was also the brother of St. John the Apostle. Let us begin his story. So, of course, as St. John, and oh no, we have not actually done an episode on St. John, but regardless, St. James was a Galilean. He was also one of the three beloved disciples of our Lord. So there were three of the 12 apostles whom our Lord always took with him on special occasions. Peter, who was to be the leader of the apostles, and then the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. So this is that James that the Bible speaks of. Regarding those different situations, we see a few of them. So we have in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, we have when our Lord is to raise the maiden, who is the daughter of Jairus, from the dead. And this comes from, again, the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, quote, And he admitted not any man to follow him, but Peter and James and John, the brother of James. We have the occasion when our Lord is transfigured, he goes up into a mountain and only will take these three apostles with him. This comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 17, quote, And after six days Jesus taketh unto him Peter and James and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured before them, unquote. He will also take these three with him for his agony in the garden. So they finish the Last Supper and they enter into the garden with all the apostles following. And then he just brings the other three a little further into the garden with them. And then once they are further away, then he goes himself further away. This comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26. Quote, and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which are James and John, he began to grow sorrowful and to be sad. Then he saith to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch with me. A couple of other occasions where we see St. James. We have that rather awkward moment when the mother of St. James and St. John will approach our Lord and ask him to put her two sons at his side in his kingdom, one on his right, one on his left. This comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 20, quote, Then came to him the mother of the sons of Zebedee with her sons, adoring and asking something of him, who said to her, What wilt thou? She saith to him, Say that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. Now I say this is an awkward moment because first of all, our Lord refuses saying that it's not his place, but his father's place to put this or that saint on his left hand or on his right hand. But further, the other apostles find out that they try to, so to speak, get the uh, seats of honor with our Lord in his kingdom, which kind of rubbed the other apostles the wrong way. Finally, we have that moment which I quoted at the start of this episode. It comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 9. So our Lord was traveling, and he went to enter a town of the Samaritans, and they refused to accept him because he was, he is a Jew. And the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, are very upset with this and so they ask our lord if they can call fire down from heaven and consume the inhabitants of the town quote and when his disciples james and john had seen this they said lord wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them and turning he rebuked them saying you know not of what spirit you are 
The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save. And this episode, this moment, if you will, in the life of our Lord is primarily what gave these two apostles the nickname the Sons of Thunder. Thunder being obviously very loud, very harsh. Um, They had this kind of temper that would sort of flare up, so they were given that the special title, the two of them together. After the events of the Gospels, after our Lord's ascension and all, we do not know too much more of St. James. We know that he went and preached the divinity of our Lord in Judea and Samaria, and eventually those set out for Spain and converted others in that country. And some of those converts, seven of those converts, will eventually be consecrated bishops by St. Peter himself later. James then returned to Jerusalem, and among others, he instructed the magician Hermogenes with the Catholic teaching. Eventually, though, King Herod Agrippa was looking to please the Jews of his land, and so he arrested St. James and tried to get him to renounce this faith. His fearless confession of Jesus crucified, though, so moved the public prosecutors, not King Herod, but the one who was who had brought him to King Herod. Uh, he was so moved by St. James's profession that he himself declared himself a Christian and um, was actually eventually executed with St. James. So they were both taken to the execution, and I think as far as I know, they were both beheaded. Before their execution, though, on their way to the execution, the prosecutor did ask for James' forgiveness for having brought him before King Herod, and James forgives him with the response, Peace be to you. An interesting episode after, long after, in fact, about 800 years after the death of St. James. You remember at the end of the last episode, I said that we would discuss why another nickname of St. James is Moore Slayer. This is because during the Muslim invasions of the country of Spain, there was a certain battle called the Battle of Clavillo in which the Christians were very much outnumbered by the Moors, by the Muslims. And the Christians obviously were becoming very, or coming to the point of despair, really, when they saw the army of the Moors descending upon them. Uh, That is until an image on a white horse carrying a white banner charged the Moors himself alone and drove back the entire army of the Moors. The Christians recognized this rider as the same St. James, the Apostle. And as St. James rode through the army of the Moors, the Christians yelled out in joy, saying, God save St. James. St. James, on this occasion, is said to have slain 5,000 Moors on his own, and so, of course, earned him the title Moor Slayer. So from the life of St. James, again, as we do with any of the apostles, let us be willing to go out and spread the word of Christ, the word of God, even if that is just simply among your friends or your family, you know, taking time to read the gospels and to read the epistles and looking at these different episodes, you know, you, you, I'm sure, think about the saints periodically, especially when you are going to Mass, how much time do you actually spend learning about that particular saint? I think this is very important for us to do, which is obviously why I'm doing this podcast, at least for now, is to help you to see and to understand these different heroes so that they're no longer just names to you. They are actual people, people who existed and people who did great things. So following his example, let us be willing to spread this truth of Christ to others. The next day, so tomorrow, by the time this is posted, that is, is the, well, it's Sunday, but it is also the feast of St. Anne 
the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we will go into that tomorrow. Today, though, I just want to mention it's also the Feast of St. Christopher. And there's not much known about his life other than he was a martyr at the time of Decius. But there's also that famous story. So St. Christopher was in the habit of carrying strangers. He was a giant of a man. He was a really big guy. And he would carry strangers across a river to the other side so that the others didn't have to walk around. He was tall enough and big enough that he could walk across the river. Now there was one day a, a child woke him up in the middle of the night and asked to be carried across. And he did so, as he always had, but for some reason this child was so heavy that he started to really struggle across the river. And he has, was very surprised by this. Obviously he had carried adults across the river as well and had no problem. But the child, knowing that he was struggling, said, Do not be concerned at how heavy I am, for you bear the one who bears the world. So it was actually an image of apparition of our Lord as a child that St. Christopher was carrying across the river. And once he finished carrying him across the river, the Christ child disappeared. Just a little something to think about. This is why his name is Christopher. The name Christopher means Christ bearer. So he carried Christ on his shoulder, and so he earned this title because of this event. Anyway, until then, so tomorrow we'll look at St. Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. James Morslayer, pray for us.